This knife has a straight edge on it, so it's very easy. And maybe in our world here, there lives a happy little mountain. Hello, hello, hello. This is Alvin Teaches Poker, and today I am doing my first GTO quiz to kick in the new year. We've dedicated a lot of 2019 to studying what the solver has to say, and now let's see if we actually have learned anything. Today, we're looking at an example where the button raises to 2.5 big blinds, and the big blind defends optimally. The flop becomes the 10 of spades, 7 of hearts, and 6 of spades, and the big blind checks. Question 1. If given the option to bet 40%, 80%, and 120% of the pot, or check, which should the button do the most often? And the answer is D. Check. Here on this board, where the button probably can't have all combinations of 9-8 offsuit and 9-8 suited, while the big blind probably can have all of those, it's going to be a better strategy to polarize on the flop rather than betting anything near your entire range. On this particular board, the button should actually be checking back the majority of the time. Question 2. When the button does bet, Given the choice between 40% of the pot, 80% of the pot, and 120% of the pot, which sizing should the button use the most? And the answer is B, 80% of the time. When the board is so coordinated, usually the button should the button should use a strategy that alternates betting between a very large sizing on the flop and checking. And this is clearly demonstrated in this example. Question 3. As the button, which of these hands checks back the flop the most? Pocket jacks, pocket tens, 9-8 offsuit, or pocket sevens? And the answer is pocket tens. While pocket 7s and 9-8 offsuit unblock so much of your opponent's calling range that they should definitely be put into your flop bets, pocket 10s blocks a lot of your opponent's calling range and should be the hand that you can consider slow playing the flop the most often. Pocket jacks, which can stand a lot of protection and blocks a lot of your opponent's bluff raising range, you should be betting the majority of the time on the flop. In this example, pocket ace will be checking back the overwhelming majority of the time. You bet 80% on the flop, and the big blind calls. The turn brings in the eight of clubs, and the big blind checks. Question 4. If the button is given the option to bet 30%, 60%, and 120% of the pot, which is the preferred bet size? The answer is A, 30% of the pot. Here when the obvious draw comes in, there's no real incentive to size up, because when you have a 9, you'll be blocking your opponent's calling range, and when you have a bluff, you don't want to bet two-thirds of the pot and then run into a 9. Additionally, betting one-third on the turn often gets you to set the price of showdown, freezing your opponents and having them check to you on the river, allowing you to check back when you want to showdown cheaply. Question 5, and each of these answers is worth a point. Which of these hands bet 30% of the pot the majority of the time, and which of them check back the majority of the time? Ace of spades, ace of diamonds, king of diamonds, five of diamonds, pocket jacks, or the king of spades with the eight of diamonds? And the answers are, aces should bet the flop, kings should bet the flop, jacks should bet the flop, and the one hand that you should check back is the naked eight. Here, this is a position where I imagine players are checking back way too often and allowing their opponent not only to realize free equity on the river, but also it allows their opponent to set the price of showdown 
While you have a slightly more face-up hand than usual, especially if you always bet all of your nines on the turn, but never bet all of your hands like pocket queens. This is a situation that I think the overwhelming majority of new players mess up. They'll probably size up too much on the turn, they probably won't bet enough on the turn, and sometimes it's important to realize that the best play is to bet the turn with a sizing that is going to be smaller than what your opponent will lead into you if you check back. Question 6. After the button bets a third of the pot, what is the majority action for the following hands if the big blind can fold, call, or raise two thirds of the pot? 9 8 offsuit, Jack 4 of spades, Pocket 7s, and Ace 9 of spades. And the answers? 9-8 offsuit should call and continue to call. In fact, a straight should usually call on the flop in order to protect itself from getting blasted on the river. The only straight that should be raising very consistently is jack-9 offsuit, which is the pure nuts. Because the pure nuts includes a jack, jack-4 of spades is also going to be a raise now that it turns a blocker to the nuts and a little bit more equity with the possibility of a 4 out being live. And definitely we can see that that 4 out is going to be live if the button should be betting hands like aces on the turn. Pocket 7s, pocket 8s, and pocket 6s usually should be raises on the turn. So even when the straight comes in and your opponent bets small, the correct play is to still be raising these very very strong sets. And finally, Ace of spades, nine of spades is going to be a raise, not only because it's a straight, but then it also allows for a redraw against other straights. So 12 possible points, how did you do? This is what my cute little scale looks like, and for full disclosure, when taking this test, I estimate that I would have gotten about a so if you got a 4, if you got a 3, don't fret, this was a particularly difficult GTO test, and when I showed some elements of this to my friends, they were struggling equally as much. Hopefully this opened your eyes to some interesting situations that occur on these very, very coordinated flops, particularly when they become more coordinated on the turn. And hopefully I've made you extremely sensitive to some gaps in your knowledge, both as the button attacker and the big blind defender. Thank you everyone so much for a huge 2009, just broke 5,000 subscribers, over 100 students, an overnight monster. I have some big partnerships planned with some big YouTubers in the next year. I can't wait to tell you guys all about it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and as always, this is Alvin Teaches Poker. Have a great new year.